We've got a little bit of Euro nymphing going on here. A little bit of Euro nymphs anyway. We're gonna tie a couple. I'm gonna do some really technical stuff. Not really, I'm joking. Like some uh, squirmies, some squirmy wormies. Uh, because it's a crazy effective fly and a lot of people haven't seen the wiggly effect of the squirmy. Then I want to tie a little stone fly with some legs and I'll show you to start out with here I'm going to show you a little uh, betas type of a nymph. Uh, just a little mayfly imitation. Have any of you tried Euro nymphing before? So Euro nymphing we use uh, weighted flies instead of instead of split shot or sinkers to get the flies to the bottom. And uh, so I've got a tungsten bead on here with a slotted uh, section to it instead of a counter drilled bead and I've got a 60 degree hook it's got a 60 degree bend in it I'm going to run this 70 denier thread back and then I'll grab some Coke de Leon for a little bit of a tail this stuff's really cool because it's got some nice sheen to it and it has really nice speckling as well I'm going to pull a few of these fibers off for a tail. Size 14, it's a, uh, this one's a fulling mill, but you could also use a Hanek or a TMCO. There are lots of jig hooks available now. So I've got the tail tied in there, tungsten body, or bead. Next I'm going to use some Sculpinol of UTC wire. We'll wrap a little ribbed section through it to make it look like it's a segmented body. This will also add a little bit of weight to the fly. This is a brassy sized wire. I'm going to tie it in right behind the bead. That way it's tied all the way down the shank and I don't have a, a lump where I tied it in at the back of the fly. And I'm just going to cover the body with the thread. I want to make basically a really slender olive mayfly nymph. So by coating the body with the thread, it makes that nice olive color. This is a really simple pattern, which is the way I like them, so I can tie them quickly and uh, fish them down where the fish live near the bottom and not worry about losing them. So I just ribbed the uh, brassy wire through the fly and rather than cut this I'm just going to wiggle it back and forth until it breaks off. That way it doesn't leave a burr where the wire has been removed. Next up I'm going to put a little bit of uh, UV flow from Loon to coat the body. This will make the body last longer and it makes a neat looking uh, body too. If you haven't used the UV products, it stays soft until you hit it with a UV light. So I'm going to set it up real quickly with this light. A really powerful light makes it so that it sets up very, very quickly. It usually only takes a few seconds. Now that's dry. Instead of waiting for uh, you know, head cement or something like that, you can have the fly basically all the way dry right now. And then the next step of this fly, this is a really easy one, is a little bit of ice dub and UV pink. You could also do UV shrimp pink is another favorite color of mine, or fluorescent chartreuse, any sort of a little hot spot. Uh, we fish a lot of flies in competitions that have either thread collars or dubbing materials that are uh, really bright and uh, more or less in the fish's face. It's just hard for them to avoid it. So I'm going to build up just a little bit of a collar just behind the knee, a little hot spot. And then I'll finish it. It's as simple as that. This one I call just a thread Frenchie. Mm -hmm. You can also do the regular Frenchies basically the same except you do pheasant tail body and maybe copper wire instead of the sculpt and olive. But the, uh, the thread Frenchie is faster and uh, it's more durable because the pheasant tail, although it works well, the pheasant tail is not durable, right? The first trout's tooth that touches it cuts it apart and it can break, break down. These are a lot more durable. I use them a lot while I'm guiding. Uh, and then because of that, I, I'm, a, I'm a believer in confidence flies and the more I fish them, you know, the more I catch fish, the more I, I have confidence they're going to work. And when I'm out fishing with clients and they're catching fish after fish on this type of a fly where I used to just tie them because they were easier and quicker and more durable than the regular Frenchie, now I fish this one almost as much or more than I do the Frenchie just because it's more durable. Works just as well for me. 
It's really simple. This one's a 14. I time as big as about a 12 and uh, down to like 18s and 20s at times, but I mostly fish them in 16s locally. They're a cool little bug. Really, really simple, right? It is, yeah, it's a jig jig hook. It is, it is. 60 degree bend with a slotted tungsten bead. Uh -huh. No problem. Any other questions on that one? Good to go? Okay. I use this one a lot on the uh, the middle Provo, and I get a lot of comments on it, like when I'm in the shop and, I, and people come in and ask what's working on the river, and I show them this, I've honestly had people ask me if I've ever fished the Provo before. Because they think, based on my response, that I, I couldn't possibly know what I'm talking about. Uh, and I have to just kindly say, yes, I have fished it lots and lots of times before. Uh, but there are lots of stonefly nymphs in the Provo River, especially in the middle Provo. In the summer months, my guide trips, uh, we probably catch 60-70% of our fish on this fly. Where most fishers are out there, most guides and anglers are out there fishing 6x, 7x, and size 22 midge patterns. Uh, we fish big flies in slightly different water types and have a lot of success. So I started out here, this is a size 10 hook. It's a Daiichi 1730. Okay, the 1730 has kind of a neat kink to it. Can you see how it's already bent? Uh, that bend will help the fly actually flip over. So I'm going to start with a thinner thread, with a 70 denier thread to start. Any color you like, brown, olive, black, doesn't really matter. I'm going to start it right at the eye. I slid my bead back to the end of the vise to start with. I'm going to get some brown span flex and tie it in from my tail. I'm going to collect it and just tie these little antenna extending over the eye. I need to tie them in front of the bead and I'm using a thin thread so that I don't build up so much bulk that I can't slide the bead back over the top of my tie-in points. Okay, so I'll tie these in and I'll whip finish, cut that thread. Now I can slide my bead back up and I've got the antenna in front of the bead. Now I'm going to switch threads to UTC 40 denier in a brown or dark brown, doesn't really matter. Either one will work fine. And we'll wrap it down the shank to coat the shank. <clears throat> then I'm going to tie my tail in this time. Same material, the span fleck in brown. Collect these two ends. It's best if you can get them going the same direction when you tie them in so that they'll lay nice and straight for you. They generally have a little bit of uh, natural curve to them, so you might have to play them for a second. I often just tie them in, trim that stuff off, lash them in with some pressure on the thread, and then I stretch them and move the thread down the shank a little bit more to make them so that they're a nice kind of Y shape there, right? So now I've got a Y out the front for the antenna and a Y out the back for the tail. Next up I'm going to add some variegated chenille. This is a black and coffee color. This is my favorite color combination, but you can also do these in just straight brown chenille or in uh, black for some rivers, you know, if you have black stone flies, like a Terranarsis. For the middle Provo there's lots and lots of golden stones, so a ginger colored chenille or brown or black and coffee or black and ginger, all those would work well. So I stripped a little bit of the chenille away from the core, left just the core remaining and I've tied it in here at the base where my tail starts. I rotated my thread up the shank a ways and I'm just going to let it hang while I wrap the chenille around to create the body. So I'm just budding wraps here. Then I'm going to get up to about right there, the chenille off and just get it to hang tight here for a second. I'm not going to trim it off because I still want to wrap it through for the rest of the body. I just want to hold it in place while I add my legs. Next, same, same product for the legs. I've got Spanflex material in brown. This brown Spanflex, if you grab a hold of it and fold it over the thread, you can then latch it onto the hook very easily. Okay? And you don't have to worry too much about the, the positioning of the legs because I can manipulate them a bit with the, the chenille after I get them tied in place. You know, you want to get them relatively where you want them to finish, but if they're not perfect before you wrap the chenille, that's okay. I'm going to tie that guy off. 
And same thing on the other side, catch it with a thread, walk it around and just capture it on that side of the hook. Now one thing that I should mention here is this is basically just a patch rubber leg stone, right, with a tungsten bead. Most of the time with these you put three legs on each side, which works great, the fish love that. I used to do mine that way and then again because of uh, guiding purposes, a lot of times before I guide I'm up till midnight, one o'clock in the morning tying flies the night before and I got tired of putting the third leg on on each side. So I, one day I thought I'm just going to try them with two legs on each side, figuring if the fish can count the legs we're in big trouble, right? So the, uh, the long and short of it is I, fit, I started fishing them with two legs and the fish don't care at all. They're faster to tie. Uh, so now I just do them all with two legs on each side. To be anatomically correct, you could certainly add the third, and the fish will still like you, no problem. I'll wrap this through, I'm going to wrap this leg, I'm going to pull it back and wrap chenille in front of it, and then I'll wrap chenille in front of this one, and give us one more wrap behind the bead to seal them off, and we're there. Tie off the chenille, get rid of it, and then we'll finish. You can do these with various bead sizes, and then you can also add lead wire to the underbody to make them even heavier. For Euro nymphing, I usually carry them like this with no weight. You don't have to weight them though. If you're fishing a, an indicator rig, you could just do this even without the bead or without any weight at all. But the bead won't hurt a thing, just get it down a little bit. I do find that these flies work best. Uh, this particular fly works best with a black bead. Where a lot of my patterns, like the last one I tied, I like a little gold or a silver bead on a lot of patterns. For some reason on this one, when I tie it with a gold bead, the fish don't like it as much. So anyway, just a patch rubber leg stone with a slight kink in the shank. So let's move to the technical one then. The squirmy wormy. The squirmy wormy is tied with this squirmito, caster squirmito product. It's uh, really lively and, and wiggles, stretches. Uh, it's, it's basically just like a San Juan worm, but this material works better. It's not nearly as durable as regular chenille worms. Uh, I weight mine again, I put a bead on them because I like to uh, fish them on a nymph rig without sinkers so I have better contact with the nymphs. Most of you have probably heard of that European technique. If you haven't, swing by the fly fish food, food booth over there or get online and grab one of these uh, modern nymphing DVDs. That'll walk you through the Euro nymphing process. So I'm going to get a fulling mill scud hook. You could use any nymph hook. A TMC 2457 would work great. Uh, you know, Daiichi 1130. There's all kinds of whatever your favorite scud hook is that will work great for this fly. Then I'm going to take Whoa. a copper tungsten bead in 3.3 millimeter. I tie them heavier sometimes too, in like three and a half or four millimeter beads. And there's one trick to this fly, and that is I'm going to put the bead on backwards. Normally beads are counter drilled. They have a large hole and a small hole. I'm going to put the large hole through the point first, okay, which normally will cover up your eye because the big hole's in the uh, too large and it will slide forward. But what I'm going to do is actually tie the worm extending out the front. And the uh, tie-in bulk with my thread is going to eat up enough space that I'll then cover that mostly with the opening and the bead. So that's why I put it in there backwards. This squirmy stuff, I'm telling you, if you haven't tried these, does anybody fish worms? Does anybody fish like San Juan worms? How many of you have tried these already? One, two, okay, two or three, that's good. Okay, it's, a, it's an awesome fly. The squirmy wormy. So I've got UTC 140 in uh, shell pink in this case. You could also use wine thread or a fluorescent pink. This one's my favorite. It's got uh, a little bit of UV property to it. You see that light up on the screen a little bit. It's hard to see there. You can probably see it better at the naked eye. It just gets really bright. It's a pretty neat color of uh, thread. <clears throat> then I'm going to take the squirmy material. The hard part with this material is that it's difficult to work with. It wants to travel around the hook a lot on you. So I tend to get a couple of nice wraps in place. Then I stretch it. This side of it I'm stretching and I tie down with pressure, working backwards working back towards the bend to hold it in place. And here's where my bead will now come and cover up some of that as I put pressure on the fly, right? Now I'm going to start the thread right behind the bead. I'm going to change the angle of the hook and the vise. 
because I'm going to wrap, wrap this material back down here a little ways. I'm going to tie it in. The thread will keep it from spinning around as much. It's still going to spin on me. Like I said, it is a difficult material to, to work with, but you'll get the hang of it. I go around twice loosely and then tighten up on it and then hold tension and continue those wraps up the shank right up to the bead. Now I've got it tied in, it hasn't rolled around. Reposition that a bit. Throw a half hitch in here. And now we can rotate the same material through the body of the fly. So if you just wrap it over the top, and then when you get to the bead, you just keep wrapping right behind the bead and it pushes the previous wraps back. Okay? Where you get it where it's covered nicely. Then while it's under tension, I'll pull a little bit of thread over the top of it. I like to do three or four wraps with this one to hold it in place because I feel I find that this is stretchy enough that when I let it go, if I don't have quite a bit of thread to hold it in place, it'll spring loose. Then you give it a stretch and get rid of it. One other trick with this fly is you don't want to put head cement on it. The head cement oftentimes eats the uh, squirmy material. So instead of head cement, I usually just whip finish twice, sometimes even three times right behind the bead. Pull it nice and tight so your confident won't come undone. And then trim that tag end away and you've got a squirmy wormy. So again, you can do these in several weights. Uh, by weights, I mean you can weight the body, but you could also just change the bead size. It improves our contact with our flies. Our strike detection's better because we're not in contact with the weights. We're in contact with our flies. So we tie them all weighted. That's why everything I've got, if you look, go through my fly boxes, almost everything has tungsten beads on it. And oftentimes, tungsten beads with lead wire underneath. Any questions on that super technical squirmy wormy? Any other questions? Good to go? Awesome. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Don't forget our DVD. It's available on uh, Vimeo also.